The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. This one was in the context of marriage. Then when Paul was talking about the fact that the husband is ahead and he should love the wife and both of them should submit to one another, then he made this statement. He says that marriage is, is a mystery. It is a symbol of Christ and his church where Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. And the marriage ceremony has not come on yet. So all of us are brides of the bridegroom. One day he will be totally married to us and we will be with him forever. So as long as the church is on this planet earth, the Bible describes the church as a bride being prepared for the bridegroom who is Christ. So ultimately, we'll be caught up for him as his bride. So that is the ultimate goal of the church. So all that we are doing is to fashion us and make us beautiful, wonderful bride presented to him who is the bridegroom. Are we together? Are we together? Now, the church today seems to have forgotten this glorious end or the goal. And so the church is not so much concerned about the spots, the wrinkles, the blemish. People are just churching. There has not been any generation in our country that we have so many ministers of the gospel than this generation. You go out there and there are so many billboards. Everyone is a pastor. We see people working in the banks and they are also pastors somewhere. And we see all sorts of ministers. Some post as angels. Some will tell you that when you see me, there is a last end. See, it looks like some occults have even joined the ministry. And they call themselves bishops, apostles, and whatever. But you see, it is in this generation that the church is also so poor and weak. Because the church is not able to change the society. It means that it is weak. In the law of osmosis, where the concentration is, it flows into where the concentration is less. So once the life or the lifestyle of the world is flowing into the church, then the church is weak. So the church in our generation does not just care about the spots and the wrinkles. It doesn't matter how you make your money. People sit in church and the two of them are fornicators. They don't care. They come and then they worship God. They do not care because we have forgotten about the goal of the church. Have I communicated? They have forgotten about the goal of the church. The apostle Paul says that I should be careful so that I don't run my race in vain. Let us be careful so that our coming to church every day and night will not be in vain because there's a goal for the church of God. It's a goal for the church of God. Do you remember that one day Jesus told the disciples that he was going to prepare a place for them. Do you remember? Can we read John 14? Let's read verse 1, 2, and 3. John 14, 1, 2, 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house and main rooms, if it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Now, hold on. Hold on. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. He was speaking to the disciples. The disciples represents us. So somehow, he was telling the church that I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
the next verse, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Yeah. So, don't you think that you one day finish? Huh? Or you prepare every day, prepare every day, prepare. He says that when it is done, he will come back and take us to himself. This city that he is preparing, if you read, it's a room. He, he used the word house. That is why he says a room. But you see, uh, it's not a house. It is a city. Yeah. He's going to prepare for us a place. A place. And when he is done, he will come for us. So, the preparation of this city meets the end of the church. Let me say that again. Because it is the church that is going to be caught to meet in the city. The, the city is being prepared for the church. Once the city is done, we will be out of here. So at the end of the day, we are looking forward to that city. And as we wait for that city, he is still preparing us as a bride for himself. Hallelujah. Are we here? Revelation 19 verse 6. I'll read up to verse 8. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God, O omnipotent reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come. The wedding of who? The Lamb has come. And what? And his bride has made herself ready. Has made herself ready. It gives us the impression that all the while, the bride was being prepared. One day, the wedding will come on. It's going to happen in that city that Jesus said, I'm going to prepare. The next verse, 8. Let's read together. Ready for fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to fine linen stands for what? The righteous acts of the saints. Now, see when the bride is coming in, we all pay attention to the dress the bride is wearing. And then you hear the woman saying, hey, it's nice, it's beautiful. Hey, this one, is this from, is this from America? And somebody, hey, it was sold here in Ghana. So you should wish shop. The women say, we well, in the intro. <laughs> As for them, they don't just keep quiet or they talk. <laughs> so they'll be discussing because what makes the bride bride is what the bride is wearing. Otherwise, we know this lady already. She's a member of this church. But on that day, Something different is on her. That makes her the bride. Standing out amongst all of us. I don't think that on, on a wedding day, any of us will go and wear a long gown like a bride and come and stand here. You wouldn't do that because you are not the focus. If you do that, the thicknesses will throw you away. I'm telling you. They will ask you, why? Why? Do you want to compete with the bride? So you don't do that. The bride is the focus and the bride is being prepared. And the Bible says that the garment that the bride was wearing in the revelation that John saw is what? Or was what? The righteous ass of the saints. So when you are not doing things right or when you are not righteous, when you are not living the kind of holy life, when the church is not concerned about the spots and wrinkles, we are disqualifying our members from being part of the wedding ceremony. 